the word for today is heaven. What is heaven like? People, both believers and non-believers, have an opinion about heaven, even if they think it doesn't exist. Yet it is, for some, it's where everybody will meet up after death in some great big reunion, providing they weren't too bad in this earthly life. And the caricature of the comedians is that heaven will be floating around on clouds and playing a harp boringly all day. So what does the Bible, the foundation for all serious Christian thought, have to say about heaven? Firstly, it says that it's a physical place. The Bible describes heaven as a house, a kingdom, a paradise, a holy city. These are all descriptions of heaven's physical properties. Now look and listen at all these characteristics the Bible offers about heaven. It's a place of joy, a place of rest, a place of peace, a righteousness is everywhere. It's a place of service, it's a place of reward, an inheritance, and filled with glory. No sitting around on clouds there. For instance, the word service implies working. Who is it for and who can enter? Who is it prepared for? It is for all those names recorded in the book of life of Malachi 3, verse 16 to 18. It's for the righteous, Matthew 5, verse 20. The obedient, Revelation 22, verse 14. And for all those who are declared holy, Revelation 19, verse 8. And people enter heaven through giant gates of pearls according to Revelation 21. And a pearl is formed as an oyster suffers, covering a grain of irritating sand until the irritation ceases. And what do you think that suffering was that created these giant pearls? It can only be the cross and the incredible suffering and pain that Jesus Christ endured upon it. It is only through the death of Jesus on that cross that you can be declared holy and righteous. And only those who have been declared holy and righteous will be able to stand in the presence of Almighty God. And what is an attitude of the Christian? As a Christian, your current attitude towards heaven should be to desire it, 2 Corinthians 5, to eagerly keep watch for it, 2 Peter 3 verse 12, and to put all your treasure there, Luke 12 verse 32. And we also see from the Bible that heaven is prepared and it is a pure place. Prepared because Jesus promised us, I am going to build a place for you in John 14 verses 1 to 4. Jesus Christ has been working on heaven for almost 2,000 years. And that's only till now. Jesus has prepared a place for all those who love him, trust him and obey him as king. He is expecting you wanting to lavish his love upon you and all others who love, trust and obey. And heaven is pure. It's a pure place, Revelation 21 verse 1 to 4. No more suffering. And today we all suffer in some way. But when our King Jesus Christ returns, no more will man's inhumanity to man be allowed. No more pain, no more death, no more suffering, no more sin. Perfection attained, and it is only to the glory of an almighty and merciful God that this will occur. And what does that, this mean for you now? All this doesn't mean that you are to be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly use. Rather, you are not to be so earthbound that you are not tied to Jesus in your eternal home, heaven. Won't you tell somebody today, about heaven and how they can get there with you.